This is Twit. Is that an iPhone in your hand? Wait a second. Is that an Apple Watch on your wrist? And do I, do I see an iPad sitting there on the table? Oh my goodness. You are the perfect person to be watching iOS today, the show where Rosemary Orchard and I, Micah Sargent, talk all things iOS, tvOS, watchOS, HomePod OS. It's all the OSs that Apple has on offer, and we show you how to make the most of those gadgets. Just head to twit.tv slash iOS to check it out. Now, back in May, we reported the possibility of Apple getting to bed with Global Star at a, basically a SAP based telecom company where they spent about $300 million to finance 13 new satellites for their SOS services. Now, fast forward to September where they released the iPhone 14 and they announced the SOS capabilities, but the service was still on the fritz. Now, Apple put stake in almost a, almost a third tier provider here, Global Star, which actually lost about a billion and a half dollars in the last decade with its stock trading at just the two dollars per share now they actually put a lot of stock stock and stake into this company now fast forward to now apple's planning on spending 450 million dollars more to expand the infrastructure across the us with the majority of the funding going to global star now this pc magazine article talks about just how far they're willing to go in the infrastructure in fact part of the infrastructure is to push updates and expansions to a number of the ground stations across the U.S. to use high-power antennas from a company called Cobham Satcom. Now, the interesting thing here is there is some competition in the market, right? In fact, SpaceX's Starlink services is also including a partnership with T-Mobile phones for a similar type service. I know Apple S, Apple's SOS service will roll out latest this month, but will only actually support text-based messaging at first. And they'll also offer a free two years of service when you purchase a phone. I want to bring my co-host back in because this is an interesting movement for Apple. It's a lot of money they're spending. Now, Cheaper, I, I want to br- bring you in first because I thought that this was supposed to just be um, a low bandwidth protocol. Why do they have to spend so much more money for expansion here? Uh, it, it's all about load. The um, satellites in orbit, you th- think of them just as a switch. That's really all they do. Um, it is once the data gets down to the ground, there's only a limited amount of channels or bandwidth to be able to get to the ground. And then from there, it goes out through high speed links and does its thing. Well, here's the problem uh, Global Star has not had the biggest market on earth, um, pun intended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've used Global Star a lot. Uh, in fact, the autonomous underwater, the open source autonomous underwater vehicle project, the plan is to use a relatively inexpensive, about $130, $140 hat that goes on to a Raspberry Pi and allows me to go and send, you know, in this case, in the last time I looked, it was $65 for unlimited number of inbound or outbound messages. Now, keep in mind, these are very, very asynchronous. Sometimes a message could take upwards of two hours to get to its destination. But when I'm just sending updates and, you know, wait, you know, have you know, SMS messages waiting to come inbound. Um, I was just going to go and update mission profiles for the vehicle. Well, their primary customer has been emergencies, you know, hikers, boaters, people like that that need to be able to go and send for help no matter where they are. And they don't want to spend the astronomical amount of money for a regular Iridium satellite phone. Um, it's not the cost of the phone that kills you. It's the airtime. Anyway, their other big primary user is food safety. Being able to send updates, you know, along the way in containerized cargo saying I'm still frozen is a big deal. Now what Apple's doing is they're dramatically, dramatically increasing the market with potentially tens or 20 or hundreds of millions of phones all over the world that will be able to stay in touch all the way up to, I think I remember it goes all the way up to about um, five degrees and 360 degrees. So it doesn't work at the very top and very bottom of the globe. Um, but everywhere else it works. I've actually used uh, Global Star services in the middle of the Pacific 
to send tweets while we're doing research out in the middle of the Pacific. So by adding more ground stations and upgrading the ground stations, they'll be able to relieve those bottlenecks. And by having more places to switch to, um, hopefully the bottlenecks of adding millions of iPhones isn't going to trash the performance of existing scientific and safety um, users with Global Star. It's pretty interesting what they're doing here. Curtis, I want to I throw this to you because you know, I'm seeing a lot more opportunities across the, uh, you know, the market for organizations to use cloud providers, almost start democratizing satellite usage like Azure Space. And they're, you know, they're using services, you know, like Starlink and they're partnering with services like Starlink. Now, Apple seems to be going the private route where they're, you know, they're building their own satellites uh, set of constellations there for their particular purpose. Um, it sounds like the wrong way. I feel like they're going the wrong way. Why not just work with Global Star to offer more infra and platforms so that more organizations can use this and it expands the market going forward? Do you feel like they're going like the really expensive wrong way for this? Well, let, let's first put something into context for a company like Apple with the sheer ton of cash they're sitting on, 450 million um, is, is a round off error. I mean, that, this is this is not a huge amount of money for them. Uh, if they were going to buy, I don't know, Luxembourg uh, to host their stuff, then that starts being money. This isn't. You have to know that a couple of things are true. One is that Tim Cook was Apple's head of operations. He was the COO before becoming CEO. He is known for his skill uh, and his acumen with finding cost-effective ways to do things. Right. Uh, so if Apple is going into their own satellite capabilities, you have to believe that, that they have looked at that very closely. The other thing is that they do have experience partnering with iCloud iCloud, by and large, does not sit on Apple servers. Uh, it sits on one of the other major uh, providers of cloud storage and cloud systems. So they know exactly what uh, partnering for a major part of the benefit that they provide to customers looks like. Now, I think that what Apple is looking to do is find additional ways to be an advantage to the Apple iPhone customers when, as inevitably will happen, they have to have communications that go across satellite systems. You know, just as in the early days, iMessage was a, a closed walled garden. It didn't work well with any other messaging system, then they added SMS and now more and more features from iMessage are available regardless of what kind of network and what kind of client uh, the people on the other end of the, the conversation are using. The same right. will inevitably happen with satellite. And what I think is going on is that Apple is positioning themselves to make it advantageous to Apple owners and Apple users even after the great democratization happens. Right. It's interesting to see how much money they're putting in. Like you said, it is kind of a small amount, drop in the bucket for them. But I, I feel like there's obviously something else coming. Like it's not just an SOS service. It's, it's got to be something else. Um, obviously, it's going to have, probably have voice. It's probably going to have data related. Um, maybe it's a second part of the you know advantage of having an iPhone. We'll have to see. But we'll have to also see you know what Starlink is planning with T-Mobile because this could be something very similar um, that could be competitive and it almost beats them to market. We'll, so we'll have to see how fast they go and how far they will go with it.